Hello friends, welcome to the second lecture of Microbiology lecture series. And in this video lecture, we want to talk about uh, the gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. And we'll also talk about the gram-staining principle, the mechanism, and how we can differentiate between a gram-positive and a gram-negative bacteria. And we'll also see the differences in their key properties. So stay tuned and watch this lecture thoroughly. So if you look at the structures of the cell wall, it determines the cell shape. It prevents the lysis due to change in osmotic pressure, which we know about the plants. They are very good in terms of, uh, in terms of changing osmolarity. If you put a plant cell in a very you know, dehydrated condition, and then after 3-4 hours, if you put water, then the plant cells still uh, get healthy and properly completely fine because of the cell wall they have but if you do the same thing for an animal cell they have only cell membrane uh, they can either burst the cell open or can shrink the cell down so peptidoglycan is a primary component of a bacterial cell wall while cellulose was uh, the primary component for a plant cell wall so that's the difference now the peptidoglycan has a unique macromolecular composed of repeating framework of long glycan chain cross-linked by short peptide fragments now the chemical nature of bacterial cell wall you can see peptidoglycan is made up of two amino sugars n-acetyl glucosamine n-acetyl muramic acid so we call it n-acetyl glucosamine or NAG n-acetyl muramic acid or NAM so this NAG and NAM are the two major amino sugar components of peptidoglycan layer and you can see this is uh, the NAG structure this is the NAM structure and both of them has a chain and especially the NAM also have four amino acids linked with it namely L-alanine D-glutamic acid D-diamino pimelic acid and D-alanine. Four of these amino acid structures are linked to one another in that sequence, in that order with the N-acetylmuramic acid and both of them are connected by beta-1-4 linkage and that forms this cell wall structure, this peptidoglycan complex structure of a gram-positive uh, bacteria also it's present in gram negative but in gram negative the the layer is very very thin but in gram positive the peptidoglycan layer is very thick so for a gram positive cell wall it's near about 20 to 80 nanometer thick layer of peptidoglycan that is found it includes tichoic acid and lipotichoic acid function in the cell wall maintenance and enlargement during the cell division and the move cations across the cell envelope stimulate a specific immune response as well so if you look at the zoomed in version of a gram positive cell wall you can see this is the cell membrane inside and outside the cell wall and for gram positive bacteria the cell wall is the outermost layer in the outermost layer we see this NAG and NAM connected they are cross-linked apart from that the tichoic acid with red color chain lipotichoic acid with yellow color chain and surface proteins with green colored are visible very clearly so in this other picture also you can see the NAG with red and NAM with green and lipotichoic acid and tichoic acid are also provided now both tichoic and lipotichoic acids presence is very important in terms of maintaining the cell wall structure in terms of maintaining the cell wall as well as expanding the cell wall while the the bacterial cell is increasing in size uh, before the cellular split or cell division some cells have a periplasmic space. The periplasmic space is the place between this, this peptidoglycan layer and uh, the membrane. So the cell membrane, this one, and the peptidoglycan layer, there is a space between it. That can be periplasmic space. You know, the space is always present. But for some bacteria, that space is little big. So we call that bacteria with a large periplasmic space. Otherwise, that may be little small as well. For a gram-negative cell wall, now if you think, the gram-negative cell wall, it has inner and outer membranes and a periplasmic space. Between them contains a very thin peptidoglycan layer. So think about it, the peptidoglycan layer is very thin, but there is a difference between inner and outer membrane and there is also a periplasmic space must be present between the two. So uh, the outermost membrane of gram-negative bacteria is uh, the most important structure of a gram-negative bacteria. It's a signature structure of a gram-negative bacteria. We call it a lipopolysaccharide layer or LPS layer. 
so lipid portion is known as endotoxin and may become toxic when released during infections while may function as reporters and blocking immune responses and they also contain porine proteins uh, in upper layer that regulates the molecules entering and leaving the cell so if you look at the picture very clearly now the co contrasting picture between the gram positive cell wall and gram negative cell wall gram positive bacterial cap capsule i mean i mean uh, uh, layer outside and and gram negative bacterial capsule layer outside so what we can see that in gram positive we have this very thick peptidoglycan layer like a brick and there are some this lipoticoic acid and ticoic acid on the surface and the membrane is in the b bottom portion of the cell wall there may or may not be periplasmic space but in case of gram negative there must be periplasmic space uh, whenever there is a gap between inner and outer membrane so this is the innermost uh, this is the inner uh, membrane inner cell membrane this is the outer cell membrane and this is very thin brick like peptidoglycan layer and the gap between peptidoglycan and inner membrane is a periplasmic space and the gap between peptidoglycan and outer cell membrane is another peptidoglycan i mean another periplasmic space and in the outermost membrane these are porine channels that are present which allows entry and passage of different components in and across and out of the cell membrane which is very very important in case of gram positive that's very difficult because there is a cell wall and there is no porine uh, but in case of gram negative this is mostly behaving like just an animals uh, animal cell kind of situation where there is only cell membrane and pores are there channels are there through which any component can go in and out so this is a contrast table between a gram positive and a gram negative bacteria so number of major layers in gram positive is only one in case of gram negative it's two because uh, you know actually it's not good for one and two i can say in gram positive it's two because it's 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 lipid uh, cell membrane inner cell membrane and peptidoglycan in case of gram negative it's inner cell membrane peptidoglycan and outer cell membrane chemical composition for gram positive peptidoglycan ticoic and lipotipoic acid mycolic acid and other polysaccharides while in gram negative lipopolysaccharide lps lipoprotein peptidoglycan and porine proteins on the surface overall thickness for gram positive it is thicker for gram negative thinner so gram positive the layer is 20 to 80 nanometer thickness the peptidoglycan for gram negative is only 8 to 11 nanometer thickness the outer membrane is absent in gram positive where it is definitely present and as a signature characteristics of gram negative bacteria periplasmic space is very narrow in gram positive while it's very extensive in gram negative the permeability to molecules uh, for gram positive is more penetrable gram negative is less penetrable although it's shocking to think but it, yes it is correct now the question is why and how we are calling them gram positive gram negative there's nothing to deal with the decimal system of gram kilogram here it's all about the name of the researcher who developed the staining method that help us to distinguish between the gram positive and gram negative uh, bacterial cell so it's a differential stain that distinguish cell with gram positive and gram negative cell wall so if it's a gram positive they retain crystal violet and stain purple in color while for a gram negative they lose the crystal violet uh, because they don't have the thick peptidoglycan layer and they are getting stained by the red saffron in color so you know in case of gram uh, staining we use two different stains uh, crystal violet which is known as cv and saffronine so cv and saffronine both are used and there are also decolorizing agents are also used moderants are also used but some if a cell contains and retains that 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 purple color of crystal violet that means that cell is gram positive and if a cell retains uh, the counter stain or the stain which is used later of that staining process saffronine uh, red color of saffronine then that cell is gram negative so it's important basis of bacterial classification and identification because the very first thing that we do when we are working with a, an unknown bacteria is we want to know whether that bacteria is gram positive or gram negative because we know that if it's a if it's a gram positive bacteria there should be some properties associated with it and if it's a gram negative bacteria then there should be some properties associated with it then we can continue with other dichotomous key and other modes of bacterial identification okay 
we can also use a practical as a practical aid in diagnosing infection and also guiding drug treatment so how exactly the gram staining is done before understanding the steps of the gram staining let's first know the components of the gram staining four components are used namely crystal violet is the first one it's acting as a primary stain stains all the cell walls as a purple one second one is iodine acts as a mordant combines with crystal violet to, to create a large insoluble dark purple complex now the third one is alcohol acting as a decolorizer solubilizer gram negative outer membrane and flushing iodine crystal violet complex out of the thin wall and thick positive cell resist this decolorization now this is the most important step and most important component of this of this staining the decolorizer because the moment we put alcohol the outermost layer of a gram negative bacteria is washed out is flushed out of that cell uh, and as it the outermost layer is flushed out and the cell wall was very thin that iodine crystal complex the crystal violet complex is also washed out so for gram negative bacteria every component of crystal violet and the violet color is completely washed out after treating it with alcohol as a decolorizing agent but for a gram positive bacteria even if we use decolorizer even if we use alcohol but it's not going to dissolve that outermost layer because the gram positive they don't have any outermost cell membrane they only have a thick peptidoglycan layer and the alcohol cannot wash it out thus at the end we use safranine and as we know that uh, saffron strains all the cell walls pink but as the cell wall of gram positive is already violet deep purple dark purple it's not going to take the color of saffronin okay but the cell membrane cell membrane and cell wall of gram negative is colorless so they will take up this color and will be turned as pink or reddish so these are the steps of gram staining now the first step is flooding with crystal violet for one minute and then we rinse it because we hope that both of them will take the color and that's true both of them takes the color both of the cell wall take the color and cell membrane also takes the color in case of the gram negative as you can see here the second step flood it with iodine for one minute and then rinse iodine will help in stabilizing uh, the crystal violet complex because iodine crystal violet forms a large complex that cannot be left and removed even after rinsing so that's stabilized for both it's stabilized now the third and most important step rinse it with alcohol until no more purple color comes off from the slide so and then we also rinse so you can see when we put alcohol it will rinse off the outermost layer of the gram negative bacteria and thus also removing the crystal violet and iodine complex so all the color components are left so no color left for gram negative but color still left for gram positive and the last step flood it with safranin and then again rinse and dry so when you put safranin uh, for gram negative which is by the way colorless by now will take the color of safranine and now will be pink and red in color while uh, the one gram positive will not take the color of safranine because it's already had the purple uh, i mean already had the violet color sorry so as it already had the violet color it will stay with the violet color and thus we can say the gram positive will contain the violet color from crystal violet and the one gram negative will get a red color from safranine so till this point we've been talking about the cell wall component of of bacteria now there are also the non typical cell walls present some bacterial groups lack typical cell wall structure example mycobacterium and nocardia gram positive cell wall structure with lipid mycolic acid which is also known as the cord factor are present pathogenicity and high degree of resistance to certain chemicals or dyes are there in in cases where there is a modification of the cell wall and also basis of acid fast stain used to diagnose the infection caused by these microorganisms because they don't have a typical peptidoglycan components in the cell wall instead they have a mycolic acid or which is also known as the cord factor on the surface and they act as a completely different virulent factor so they cannot be stained with and they cannot be identified with the help of gram positive gram negative gram staining what we need to do is we need to use a different staining known as acid fast staining to find out whether uh, the cell wall components are made up with mycolic acid or cord factor or not
and there are some uh, bacteria they do not have any cell wall at all like mycoplasma the cell wall is stabilized by sterols like whatever but mycoplasma is those infective agents without any cell wall but equally uh, virulence uh, equally dangerous in, in okay so we are done with uh, the second lecture of microbiology about gram positive and gram negative bacteria as well as about the gram staining if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe this channel so that you can get more and more like this microbiology lecture videos